what's up guys from the bro here and in today's episode of the third person and action rpg tutorial series we are going to be going over an advanced interaction system so before in the series to interact with items we had to overlap with them and this method is perfectly fine however there are some cases where we can be overlapping multiple weapons at the same time and we get this weird text effect in the center of the screen because both items are being overlapped with so we're displaying the equip item text or the add item to inventory text but something we never had was a way to set the preference of the item that we wanted to interact with. And we can do that by determining what item the character or the player is looking at. So if I walk with my character and say I look at my sword. Now I am not overlapping with the sword. I'm quite far away from it. This is because we have a hit scan coming from the center of our camera. Drawing a line trace and we're saying okay the player or the character is looking at the sword here. So we want to interact with that one. So we can support both overlap and interact by allowing overlaps, but preferring interactions. This is part one of that. It is going to be a few episodes to move everything over and get it all working together nicely. But in this episode, the main thing we need to be able to do is look at an item such as a weapon and have the add to inventory text appear on the screen for that item. So in this case, it's the basic sword, but all of my weapons will work. I can also look at my basic axe, for example. It's very, very small right now. To actually get it right is, is kind of tough. But you see there was the axe, and I had the dagger right here as well. So we'll make it easier to interact with them using the hit scan method in the future. But as long as we can get that showing up on the screen, that will be perfect for today's episode. Now, before we hop into this content, if you do want to get caught up in what you're seeing right here, the third person and action RPG tutorial series to check out things like lock on, attacking enemies, leveling up, quest system, all that good stuff, you can click this link in the top right corner. It'll lead you to the entire playlist of the third person action RPG tutorial series. Alternatively, if you're just interested in the interaction system, you may want to take a look at the original interaction system that we implemented, the overlap. Again, we're not getting rid of it. We're going to be expanding upon it to account for both interaction systems. So it is a very good idea to look at that and figure out how that works and how we're going to be expanding upon it today. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to do the majority of the logic in the code today and then we'll go to the blueprints. But we're going to go to Visual Studio, and specifically we want to go to our third person tutorial character .h. So this is our base character. And to this point, we handled our interactions just by actually determining what actors were being overlapped with. We didn't have a set actor to interact with. That was making a few things not work as intended, so we need to make some variables so that we can track what actor we want to interact with. And it's okay if we have multiple, but we want to have one preferred item. That's the one we're going to display on a prompt to the user, that way they know what they're going to interact with if they hit the interaction button. So I'm going to scroll down here to my float variables, and I'm going to make a new float called interact distance. This is the character's max interaction distance. So basically, how far can the character be and still interact with items in the world? For overlap, of course, this doesn't really matter. If they're overlapping, they're going to be within the distance. If they're not, they're not within the distance. However, for the hit scan, for actually looking directly at the interaction item, we need to know what the maximum distance is that they can interact with that item. If they are too far away, we don't want them to be able to interact. This makes sense because if they were like 50,000 feet away and his arms are only so long, then we don't want to go and try and interact with that thing that's out of reach. So this is going to be the variable for that. Again, that is float interact distance. I've made it a U property of edit anywhere, blueprint rewrite with a category of interact. We also need to know the actual actor that we are going to interact with. This will come into play a lot more in the next episodes, but it is important for this initial episode as well and I'm calling this interact actor. So this is just a regular A actor pointer. So basically any actor in the world can be the interact actor. So again, this is a U property of edit anywhere, blueprint read write with a category of interact. So we can edit this and set this in the blueprint. Now that we have those two variables, let's go up to the top and let's go to the third person tutorial character.cpp. In the constructor where we set the default value for all of our variables, let's go and set up our new variables. So we have our interact distance right here. So interact distance I set to 3000. Right now this is going to be super huge, way longer than what we want, but you'll have to play around with it and get the feel that you want. I made it 3000 because it's very easy for me to test and say, yep, I'm looking at this and know 
that my interact distance is not too small. I don't want to throw myself off when I'm debugging this by not being close enough to the item. So making it a large number like this allows me to debug more easily. We can fine tune it later. And we should also set interact actor to null pointer as well. I didn't actually do that here, but I'm going to do it now. So interact actor equals null pointer. That way it starts out as an empty value. Now, once we've made those variables, let's go back into the third person tutorial character.h and let's make two new functions. So I'm scrolling down to my blueprint implementable events. They are right here and I've made two new ones. So the first one is trigger interaction pop-up. And essentially what this is, the function that's going to trigger that on-screen message. For example, add basic sword to inventory. Now we already have this popping up, but we have it popping up when we're overlapping with the item. When the character looks at the item, we want it to pop up as well. And so we want to be able to trigger it from the character. So I've added this function on the character class. This is void trigger interaction pop-up and it takes in an actor pointer interactable actor. So basically we will pass it the actor so that that actor can give the proper details to the widget for the pop-up. That way the player knows what item they're looking at, what item they're gonna interact with. I've made this a U function that is blueprint implementable event, which means we can call it in the code, but we're going to handle the logic in the blueprint. And I've given it a category of interact. Then I have another one, void hide interaction pop-up. And so we're just going to hide whatever the notification is for the player looking at the item. So if they're looking at one and then they stop looking at it, we don't want the message to stay there saying add basic sort of inventory. We want to get rid of it. So hiding the interaction pop-up is just removing that widget. This is also a U function of blueprint implementable event with a category of interact. And we're good to go there. We can go back into the CPP and now we can fill out our logic in the tick function. So let's scroll down to the tick function. For me, it's all the way at the bottom. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of my tick function as well. Previously in the series, we had implemented pings and markers in the world. We're still working through that system at the current time, but we ended up being able to draw a line from where the character was looking and add a marker or a ping at that location. We want to use that same logic here, but just handle those collisions differently. If we're hitting an item that we can interact with, we want to bring up that prompt, right? We want to do different things with it than we do with the waypoints and the markers. However, we can use the same variables. So if you're not implementing the pings and the waypoints like I am, you're going to need these four lines that I have right here. If you are implementing them already, you have them in the series, then you can skip this next part. You don't need to make a whole new set for what I'm about to say. But I will go over this quickly, just so everyone can be on the same page regardless of what they implemented in their game. Essentially, to draw a line trace from the center of the camera, we need to get an F hit result. This is what's going to be filled out from that line trace. So if we end up hitting an object, this will be filled out with the object that we hit and the location that we hit it and all these other details. We need an F collision query params variable that I call collision rules. This is useful for determining what types of collisions this line trace can have. And if we have certain things that we want to do or not do, I'm not going to go into them today. We will get into them in the next episodes as it gets a little bit more complex. So just know we need a variable for this for now. The default values are fine. Then we need a start location and an end location. So F vector start location is the follow camera, or basically the camera that we are looking through and its current location, so get component location. The F vector end location is the follow camera plus the forward vector. This is essentially where the camera is looking, factoring and rotation and all. And we multiply it by the ping distance in this case above. The ping distance is how far we can ping, how far we're able to ping an object or place a waypoint. Then I also add start location to it because we want to offset it by the initial camera location. We don't want to just take where the camera's at and multiply it by the ping distance. We need to factor in the starting location or the camera's location. That's what we're doing for pings and waypoints. Now, we can use all those same variables for the next line trace we're going to do. The only reason I've separated this is because I am using a different distance, interact distance. And because I did want to keep this as separate as possible so that if you're skipping the pings and the waypoints, you don't have to follow those episodes to do this. I'm taking my end location variable and setting it to get follow camera, get forward vector, multiplied by interact distance, and then I'm adding the start location. If a blocking hit occurs, we want to go in and do the logic for this blocking hit. So in our case, it's going to be triggering the interaction pop-up or hiding it. 
To know if a blocking hit occurs, we can check if get world line trace single by channel. This is actually going to trigger the line trace. For passing an hour hit result, this line trace single by channel will fill out the data and return it in this variable. Then we need the start location of the trace, the end location of the trace, the collision channel of the trace. So we're going to say we are looking on the visibility collision channel. So if it's visible, we can collide with it. And this ECC underscore visibility literally just means E or enum collision channel visibility. And the collision rules, again, they're going to factor in later, but we do need to pass them along. So we're just going to pass along our collision rules variable that we made. All of this is within an if statement. So this line trace single by channel returns a Boolean. If it is a blocking hit, it returns true. If it's not a blocking hit, it returns false. Blocking hit really just means that we're actually colliding with an actor, not an overlap collision, like with how we're walking through our weapon and being able to pick them up. This actually has to collide with it physically in the world. And if it does that, we will go into this if statement, and then we want to grab the hit result dot get actor. And we want to cast that to the type of weapon or type of item that we want to interact with. It can be any actor at this point. So we have to cast it to, for example, a default weapon if we want to handle the weapon logic. So I'm adding an if auto interactable weapon equals cast a default weapon. And I'm passing in the hit result that get actor. If it is a weapon, I want to set my interact actor variable to my interactable weapon, the one that we got from the if statement. Then I want to call trigger interaction pop up and pass in the interact actor. Now I'm only handling weapons for now. Again, in the next episodes, we're going to handle environment, armor, pickup items, consumables, things like that. We will have plenty more cases here than just weapon. This is just a demonstration to make sure we can get the weapon working. Else, this means we did not receive a blocking hit that was of type default weapon. And so when that cast fails, or if hit result get actor somehow was null, we will go into this else, in which case we want to set interact actor to null pointer, and then we want to hide the interaction pop-up. We're not hovering over something that we can interact with right now, so just hide it. At this point, we can go ahead and launch the engine. Now that the editor is back open, we need to go to our base character VP. And once we're in here, we need to fill out those two events that we created and called in the code earlier. So the first one is event trigger interaction pop-up. So right click event trigger interaction pop-up right here. We'll get this node. Now, what we essentially want to do is the same logic that we did for our overlapping weapons and other items earlier in the series. But we're actually going to go one step farther and just improve it a little bit. So we're leaving a few things out. We're not dealing with multiple interactions at the current time or anything like that. Those will be for future episodes. Now, we only want to have one equip item pop up ref at a time, or add to inventory ref at a time. To make sure of this, we can go ahead and make a variable. So I'm going to add a variable, and I'm going to set it to my equip item prompt type. So equip item. is this right here. This is the text we were seeing on screen when we're getting ready to add an item to our inventory. We want to make it of that type. So I have this variable, equip pop-up ref, and it is of equip item prompt type. So equip item prompt, and we want the object reference. We're going to make a variable of that type because we want to set it when we trigger the interaction pop-up and reset it when we trigger the hide interaction pop-up. That way we know there's only one up at a time and we can change it out with other weapons or other items when we decide to do so. So first thing I'm going to do is use my new variable, equip pop-up ref, get it, and I'm going to convert it to a validated get by right clicking and selecting that option. Only if it's not valid, meaning there's one that doesn't exist right now, do we want to do this. And we are going to take our interactable actor passed into the trigger interaction pop-up event or function. And we're going to cast it to a base weapon VP. Now, we already know the type that it is from the code, but the base weapon blueprint is the one that has some of the widget logic on it. So we do need the blueprint version. So we're going to cast it there. Now, if that cast succeeds, we'll go into the next set of logic. And what we want to do is create a widget. And specifically, we want to create our equip item prompt logic. 
here. Now we have our widget, but we need to also set the correct details for the widget. We did this with our overlap events, and you can see this on the base weapon BP. So if we go back to our blueprints and we'll go to objects, weapons, base weapon BP, we have an event in here called set correct item details, which grabs the details of the item from the data table and sets all the stats appropriately. I want to call that function. So if we drag off the cast the base weapon BP, call it set correct item details, and then pass in the return value of the create equip item prompt widget here. We'll set the appropriate details. Then we can drag off the return value of the widget again and add it to the viewport so that the player can see it. Lastly, after I have done these nodes, I again take the return value of the widget and set my equip item pop-up ref to that. So now this variable is storing the widget that we have on the screen. When we look away and the hit scan no longer succeeds, we want to call hide interaction pop-up. That's what we're doing in the code. In this case, we only want to hide this pop-up if it's already valid. So I'm going to get my equip pop-up ref, convert it to a validated get, and this time only if it's valid, we're going to do anything. And we're going to remove that widget from parent. Basically remove it from the viewport. Then I'm going to set my equip pop-up ref to null, just leave it empty. That way it resets it to the default value. Now our two events in the blueprint are filled out for the base character blueprint. There's one more thing we need to do, and that is to make it so the line trace can actually collide with our weapon. If we go to the base weapon BP, go to the viewport, this is our default weapon for blueprints, and we have this interaction box. This is how we were determining our overlaps before. In here, we want to make sure our collision settings are set up where the line trace could actually succeed. So before, this was set to overlap all dynamic right here, this collision preset. So everything was overlapped. That was fine, but now that we need that blocking hit, we need to make sure that we can collide with that hit scan, which we can do by changing it from overlap all dynamic to custom. When it's custom, you'll be able to change all these individually. They can all remain overlap, but I would change the visibility trace response channel to blocking because in the code, our hit scan is looking for the E collision channel visibility right here. So we will be able to collide with objects that have a blocking collision rule with visibility. Once you do that, you should be able to come into your game, look at an actor, and you should get your equip prompt. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today, so thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and consider joining the Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord subscriptions like so many kind souls have already done. If you ran into any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There is a link in the description, and that is completely free. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's all I got for you, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.